To get started, the first thing we're gonna do is to bring in a Fusion Composition clip. Then let's take it directly to the Fusion page. We're going to bring in a text node as well as a background node. Then we're going to connect the text node to the background node as a foreground. Then let's also connect the merge node to media out one. So first things first, let's change the color of the background to white. Then let's also go to the text node and change the color of the text to black. Now let's go ahead and write our text in the text box and then change the font to a font called Special Elite, which you can download from Google Font or you can use whichever font that you prefer. As a result, we're also going to change the line spacing as well as the size of the text. Now let's go ahead and create our typewriter effect. And to do that, we're going to leverage the write on parameter. Now, as you can see, when we move the ending point towards the left, each letter is going to disappear from right to left. And when we bring the starting point over to the right, each letter is now going to disappear one by one from left to right. So that's basically how this works. And knowing that, let's move our playhead to the one second mark in the clip keyframe and we're going to move the ending point all the way to the left. Then we're going to move the playhead over by another, uh, I would say 20 frames or so. Then let's move the ending point over to the right until the word effect comes out. Then we're going to move the playhead over by another 20 frames or so. Then we're going to keyframe, but make no change at this point. Then let's move the playhead over by another 20 frames or so. And then move the ending point all the way to the right. So now, as you guys can see, we have pretty much completed the typewriter effect. And now we're ready to move on and create the blinking cursor. But before we do that, just a quick note, guys, for the write on parameter, we can also open up the spline editor and then change the interpolation from the default linear to smooth or however you like it. But for now, we're just going to leave it at the default linear. Now let's go ahead and bring in a background node and then connect it to the merge node as a foreground. We're also going to bring in a rectangle masking node connected to the new background node. So the idea here is that we're just going to play with the width as well as the height parameters so that this is going to look like a cursor. We're also going to position uh, our cursor here uh, right after uh, the first letter C. So once all that is done, we're now ready to animate our cursor. To do that, we're gonna go to the center parameter, right click, and then in the menu, choose path. This will allow us to create an animated path for our little cursor. And to get started, we're gonna come to the point where uh, the word effect comes out completely. And then we're going to move our cursor over to the right and then place it right after the letter T. And then we're going to find the point where uh, the letter I comes out. And then we're gonna just move over to the left by one frame. And then we're going to keyframe the center parameter, but make no change at this point. Then we're gonna move over to the right by one frame and then drag our cursor and place it after this letter. Then we're gonna come to the very end of this animation. And then we're going to just drag our cursor all the way over to the right. So now at this point, guys, if we replay this effect, you can see that our uh, cursor is following along uh, the uh, typewriter effect pretty well. And we did that by creating an animated path. All right, now to make the cursor blink, let's use the level parameter here. Let's keyframe it, bring it down to zero. Now let's move our playhead over uh, by about six frames. Then let's bring the level parameter uh, all the way up to one. Now let's move our playhead over by another six frames and then bring the level parameter down to zero. So pretty much the duration of one blink is about half a second. Let's also bring up the spline editor. Uh, choose only the level parameter here. Let's zoom in on it. We can select all these keyframes and then change the interpolation where we can right click and then select whichever one that you want. But the most important thing I wanna talk about here is that we need to repeat this pattern. And to do that, let's right click once again, and then we're gonna to go to set loop and then choose loop. So now, as you can see throughout the rest of this video, this pattern is now being repeated. And as we replay this effect, you guys will see that now, uh, not only is our uh, cursor following along uh, the typewriter effect, it is also blinking throughout the entire video. 
Another thing we can do here is to change the shape of the cursor very easily. So now let's come to the rectangle masking node, play with the height as well as the width parameters. So now the cursor is going to be flat instead of tall and skinny. But one issue you're going to notice right now is that this new cursor is not positioned uh, correctly. So now let's come to the rectangle masking node. Let's go to the modifiers tab and change the center of the path. Uh, basically offset it so that it is now going to be positioned after each letter. So it's looking pretty decent. And if we replay this effect right now, guys, you will see that not only do we have a brand new cursor, uh, it is also following along the typewriter effect pretty well. One last thing I want to mention here, guys, is that if we were to extend the duration of the clip, the cursor itself is going to continue to blink. And the reason is because the loop that we created earlier is an infinite loop. So you won't run into any issues if you were to do this. Okay, so I hope uh, this tutorial helps, guys. And as always, I will see you next time.